Welcome to Podcast on Tech Nation. This is a series of podcasts focused specifically on the biomedical and HTM industry. Episodes will be added monthly. Listening to each episode is eligible for one CE credit from the ACI. At the conclusion of this episode, you will be able to access a link that will take you to a quick survey. You'll be able to download your certificate once you submit the survey. Before we begin today's podcast, I'd like to invite you to save the date for our upcoming MD Expo. We will be in Temecula, California from October the 11th to the 13th. Please visit mdexposhow.com for event details and registration information. Podcast on Tech Nation would like to thank our sponsor, Multimedia Medical Systems. When you're in the business of protecting the health of patients, you don't have time for malfunctioning medical equipment or dull surgical instruments. You need a reliable partner that can provide expert repair and planned maintenance to ensure you have patient ready equipment that meets or exceeds OEM guidelines and regulatory requirements. For more information, visit multimedicalsystems.com. In this episode, we are joined by Richard Reamer from McLaren Healthcare. Rich will discuss how special technology is being integrated within hospital systems. Richard, you may begin whenever you're ready. Hey, welcome to HTM Insider. We're glad to have you back along with our guest today, Rich Reamer of McLaren Health. So excited to have him on. We had a conversation last week that I just can't wait to share this with you guys. It's a it's a new thought, a new way of doing business in the hospital. And so with no further ado, I'd like to introduce you to my new friend, Rich. Rich, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, thank you. Hopefully I won't go long. It's a boring story. You know, um, I've been doing this for 30 years in this business. So I've been all over the place, uh, been in the um, ISO business and been in uh, the uh, manufacturer side of things. And now I find myself in uh, McLaren Healthcare as an in-house uh, regional manager for clinical engineering. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. It's been a lot of, a lot of challenges over the years, as you can imagine, but uh, I survived and here I am. It sounds like an amazing career. So for those that don't know, where is McLaren Health? Where are you out of? McLaren is based out of Grand Blank, Michigan, and we have 15 hospitals that are all over the state of Michigan. Um, and also we have a hospital in uh, Ohio. So we're, we're multi-state now. And um, the hospital that we'll be kind of discussing the um, the achievements is located in Petoskey, Michigan, which is way up at the tip of the lower peninsula and a beautiful area. So I saw an article about the team that you're mentioning and what has happened there. And once I saw that, I knew I had to reach out because I thought it was new, it was innovative. And I know our listeners are always looking for that new idea, maybe that they could adopt into their hospital systems. So why don't you ter- tell everyone about E-R-C-I. What is it? Well, um, ECRI is the ECRI Institute. They handle all of the recalls and alerts throughout, um, you know, our medical industry. Uh, Very big name, international name. Um, And they had a opportunity for us to apply to um, an award that they give out. And it's the... uh, the Health Technology um, Excellence Award. And um, didn't realize how big of a deal it was until we actually um, got into the process. And uh, there were five nations actually applied for this award and uh, we were selected. So it's been an amazing journey. Um, And, you know, I can't speak highly enough of how professional they've been and through this process of uh, getting us to where we are and the amount of uh, press and other things that they've actually provided and uh, shown our our efforts to potentially the world, which is pretty awesome. 
It is. It's a, quite the accomplishment when you start to look into it. So let's just dive right in. So were you laying in bed one night, you had a new idea, or how did it all come about? <laughs> uh, well, getting started with uh, what we built at Northern Michigan is really um, years in the making. And, you know, we you went through... The construction project? Wasn't there something... Yeah, we were we were knee deep into the construction project and we we're going through the planning process, meeting with the architects and all this other stuff. And, you know, leadership, myself and, um, you know, also clinical engineering leadership, we really wanted to um, get into a position where we were just building a space. We were building the future. You know, how everybody says the future of healthcare. Uh, we truly wanted something that was going to be uh, somewhat future proof and get it to the point where we have the best system that we could potentially have. Um, you know, obviously money is a factor and we had to, we had to get that figured out. Um, but we have a fantastic foundation up there that found us some money, which is fantastic. Um, we were able to accomplish really everything that we set out to do. Um, and initially, you know, trying to bring nine different vendors together and, and coordinate that effort. Uh, the initial part of it is just, you know, how do you bridge the gap between all these vendors that want to provide their system and all of their system? They didn't want to just provide what they're the best at. They wanted to provide everything that they thought they were good at as well. Um, you know, but not everybody builds the best of the best of everything. So we, we went through the process to actually invite all of them to a single room, which they thought they were coming to a, you know, kind of like a dog and pony show where they were just going to show what they had to offer and not necessarily uh, talk with other people that provide either competing or, um, you know, systems that would complement their system. So it was really interesting um, when we invited all these folks along and they all showed up to the boardroom and we, uh, we kind of sprang it on them. Uh, there was a lot of, a lot of looking around the room, a little bit of nervousness, uh, you know, sales and their tech teams were there and nobody really knew what was happening. Except for it. our side. <laughs> I love it. I can yeah. imagine they all kind of thought they were showing up as some type of value analysis or going to pitch their product. And right. we were talking the other day, I thought it was pretty interesting when you said, what, we're going to have to learn how to work together, right? Right. And, uh, you know, initially when they come in the room and I started talking, there was just silence. You could hear a pin drop and they were just not willing to open for this conversation. Um, but after the awkwardness faded, um, one of the vendors just grabbed a hold and started saying, Hey, if I send you this, you can send me that. We can share this information. And it was, it was a process and they all started opening up to the idea of what we were actually get going after because we asked them, what would it look like if you worked with your counterparts in this room to build the best integrated system for us? What would it look like? What would it take to get us there? And, and, uh, I'd have to say, you know, years after that meeting, we came to a really good spot and, um, you know, we have probably 95% of everything we were looking for working, um, we're, we're delivering it in phases to the end user because there's so much information. We want to make sure we're not overwhelming. We're not, we're not creating an environment where they're like, okay, turn that off. I don't, I don't need this much information. But we've seen um, amazing results with some of the systems that are currently in there working. And, you know, just the numbers that we're seeing for uh, some of the safety events that, that could have, not necessarily would have gone, gone missed, but there's so much that was captured and created a, uh, an opportunity for staff to actually create a safer environment. And it's, it's working. And we're really excited about it. So let's just talk about a few things. Let's start with the patient's room. So what have you done differently and how is it working out for you? Uh, the patient room is very, very well integrated. Um, 
We have beds that talk to whiteboards. We have um, what does this mean? What's a bed that talks to a whiteboard? I haven't seen it. Right. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll dive into that. Uh, initially, um, we wanted to have smart beds, you know, beds that did more than just have patients, you know, sleeping in or, or being cared for in. So we went to um, Stryker and said, hey, what do you what do you have in this environment? Uh, they provided a wireless bed that actually communicates out all of its settings, all of its parameters. And while we were looking at that bed, we found the MediSign whiteboard, which was not on the initial list. It was something that we found and we're like, we have to have that because the bed actually directly wirelessly connects to that, that whiteboard and it does some pretty amazing things. So you mean it's replacing that board in the room, they write in Nurse Nancy, mm -hmm. 8 at 7 a.m., uh, medication at this time, it replaces all that. It does. It, uh, it reduces the frustration of the staff for keeping up with the board. And it also um, creates an environment where the patient knows really what's happening. And it's, and it's actually directly connected to our, our uh, electronic medical record, which is Cerner. And Cerner updates a lot of that board automatically by sending information to MediSign. So, you know, it comes right out of the nurse's hands, goes directly into an automated process. Um, but there are situations where the nursing staff and the caregivers can actually leap notes electronically on the board um, from their nurse station or from their wild cart. They can log in and leave a note for the patient or the family members. Um, it's, it's a really unique situation. But back to the bed, sending the info, um, if the patient is a fall risk, and this is where the safety really comes in, if the patient is deemed to be a fall risk, then the bed is set up appropriately for that patient. And the fall is set within the bed, but the bed is now configured and at a point, uh, side rails up, head of the bed at the right angle, brakes are set, the alarms are set, and that's all displayed on the MediSign. And if the patient happens, it, it is. And if the patient um, happens to exit or begin to exit the bed and the alarm goes off, the board doesn't just sit there and say, okay, there's an alarm going off. It actually gets involved with the process by changing its state and changing to this great big obnoxious board that says, please get back in bed, your caregiver is coming. And it doesn't just change into a physical look. It actually changes and it actually audibly says in the patient's native language, it says, please get back in bed. Your caregiver is coming. So it's, it's really a cool system in, you know, not just in the room, but the whiteboard is actually posted outside the door. So you have all of your you don't have all these sticky notes or magnet cards or uh, flip um, indicators or anything like that on the door anymore. It is a white, you know, the electronic whiteboard that delivers the information about the patient in the room. And, you know, so it takes it to that next level. And then on the nurse's station, the whiteboard is also there and provides all of the same information that the other two boards provide in more of a streamlined approach. And it gives you um, exactly what the patient is doing. It show they're either out of bed or the brakes aren't set or, or it's not properly, you know, built. So people can go take action on that. And it's, it's just a great, great system. That's amazing. Now, are, are your rooms, are they all private rooms or do you have semi-private rooms? And how is that addressed? Um, we do have currently in the new space, it's all private. We will have some semi-private rooms. Um, in the existing space, but it will be a small number and we'll only use them as a semi-private when we have to, you know, extend our, our bed capacity a little bit. Um, so I wanted to ask that question because you and I talked about something else, which was totally amazing. Talk about the interaction with the nurse and the patient in the room, right? Well, we have a hands-free communication style, which is provided through Vocera. Um, hands-free badge. So there's no touching of the badge and then going to wash your hands because you've dealt with other patients. 
is completely hands-free. And obviously through the last couple of years, everybody's looking for infection prevention that is beyond this world. So we went with this hands-free, but it also, um, you know, the, the staff will be wearing, and this is a system we haven't turned on yet. They will be wearing, the hospital's wired for this, wearing another badge that actually gives location of that caregiver and it communicates that information back to those Sarah communicates that information back to the nurse call system. So as the caregiver enters the room, if the patient has an alarm situation, the caregiver enters the room and the alarm will be canceled automatically without touching anything because of the badge, because the, the system knows that that person is entering the room and going to take care of that, that issue. Um, and on top of that, because they're wearing this location badge, it's associated with that caregiver and only that caregiver. So now we have the opportunity to introduce that caregiver to the patient by displaying the caregiver's information and their picture on the Medi sign. So as they enter the room, the, the system recognizes them and it posts a picture of them on that whiteboard. Um, That's so, awesome. Yeah, it's a constant reminder of your care team, um, gives a, a better recognition. People that have, you know, some memory loss situations, potentially, they will see their face on that board and they'll know that they belong in that room. Maybe they forgot who they were, but they will know that they belong there. I think that you're probably your patient satisfaction surveys have gone up. Yeah, well, in the view definitely helps with that. You know, <laughs> you have a phenomenal view of the bay. Um, so that definitely helps, but also all of this integration and the, the fact that they know we've invested in their stay to this level, um, you know, and also we, we even thought of the patient as far as entertainment goes, you know, you, you're laying in that bed for, you know, days on end potentially, and you're, you're gonna, I know I would, I would lose my mind laying there. So. You know, if, if you're stuck in that situation, you need something to relieve you and help you um, find a better state of mind. So we looked at a system called uh, Kerbel Rego and also telehealth IPTV. And uh, the Rego device is a uh, handheld pillow speaker with a touch screen built into it. And it allows for, um, you know, surfing the net, doing FaceTime, Facebook, whatever social media you have, uh, they can log into their email. They can check their, um, you know, the status of their family if they're not able to visit. And it's, it's really um, opened the opportunity for them to still be connected to the outside world. And, you know, even though they're in the hospital, um, but it also provides education for their condition. It provides a link to a virtual nurse that is um, actually present through the television and a, uh, it's called the Banyan Bridge, that their system sits on top of the TV. It has a built-in microphone speaker uh, and it's basically a computer condensed down. It has a video camera um, and the patient can see the nurse on the TV and the nurse can see the patient via the camera. The camera can tilt, pan, zoom, all that. Um, so they, they truly are another set of eyes in the room and the patient is connected to a nurse pretty much any time they want them. Um, yeah, it is a, it's a phenomenal system. And, you know, they can pull up test results. They can share uh, images from radiology or any tests that they've had done. Um, they can actually work with the doctor. So if the doctor enters the room, he can actually call up the, the virtual nurse and have the information shared that way. Um, you know, so if there was a test result that they're waiting for, they could actually put it right there on the screen. So it's, it's just so much easier to have the data available and have someone on the other end being able to gather it for you and then display it. So yeah, it's, that's pretty exciting. And then they're connected with the telehealth IPTV. So everything is able to be sent directly to that patient. It's not like it's, uh, you know, your standard cable. Everything is sent directly to that patient for their care or for their entertainment. 
and it's all customizable. I mean, that's just great. If, if I had to be a patient, I'm going to fly to Michigan and come <laughs> stay in your hospital. So what else is going on? Like you said, you held some stuff back, right? I think you have some, you know, RF capabilities. You have a lot of other things that are going on. So what are you holding back on? And what else is outside the patient room that you guys worked on? Um, well, we're holding back on the RTLS. And that's because there's just so much more information that will be uh, coming into that situation, uh, knowing where the nurse is, knowing where the equipment is, um, and using that system and then advancing the uh, communication off of that system. Uh, the escalations can change drastically when we turn that on because uh, Vocera can handle sending the appropriate staff per to a situation, depending on their location or depending on if they're in a patient room. Um, all of that can factor in and, and make a more efficient process. You won't have somebody running from the other side of the you know, the department to enter the room to help out, it will really be pinpointed and more efficient. So that's, that's something we haven't turned on yet. And um, looking forward to that. We had conversations about that today. So we're very excited about that. Very um, exciting. Yes. And, you know, we didn't leave the OR out of, out of our integrations and things like that. We, uh, we've got Olympus and Stryker working together for a complete 4K integration. Um, so we have the highest quality video imaging for the equipment down there. Um, so the doctors are pretty pleased about that, I'm sure. <laughs> and we also have the capability of sharing video live stream from the OR to any system within our system that, com that compares to, uh, you know, the Olympus. And we have that at... Uh, two of our other facilities right now, and we're looking to move that into more. Um, so we can share teaching moments and we can also share uh, across, you know, specialties. So, you know, we didn't want to leave the OR out of this at all. What about that ER, that place where everybody goes when everything's gone wrong, right? Yeah, the ER is, is our next phase. Um, we're looking to get the uh, MediSign in there. And also, uh, you know, link that up to our call system, of course, and have that same functionality that we do in, in the patient areas. So that will be the next, the next phase is, are, is that as well. Uh, they already have the Vocera system, so they're, they're speaking hands-free, which definitely helps in the ED. But some of the other uh, systems have not been put in there. And some of it is due to, um, you know, spacing outside doorways. You know, ED is a lot tighter space. And we don't always have the real estate to put things in. So there's a little bit of a challenge as far as that goes. How's your team, clinical engineering, responding to all this? And how is the, how is the rest of the staff responding? Well, clinical engineering, of course, there's a, a learning curve on all of this. You know, everybody's wondering who owns it once it's in place. Uh, we've worked directly with IT. We have a great IT uh, department. Um, we've shared whose responsibility it is for certain aspects of this. So we're, it, you know, it's new territory. It's not like this is, you know, you know, an IV pump. It's not an IV pump. We've got a lot of, a lot of different ways of looking at the system or getting it corrected if there's a failure. And um, my team's been very involved doing all the testing um, of each system as they come online and making sure that they're communicating uh, across the other systems as well. Um, and IT has also been doing that same thing. So it's been very uh, cross-functional <laughs> and we've, we've collaborated very well. And the rest of the hospital staff, so your end users, what are they thinking about it? Uh, the end user is pleased um, and obviously learning curve and through, through our um, COVID days, you know, there's been a lot of staff change and turnover. So um, our education department has been phenomenal on making sure as people are onboarded, they get spun up on all this new technology so that, you know, nothing slips through the cracks and we don't end up losing some of our, our uh, advancements through lack of knowledge. Because, you know, if, if time goes by and you don't use it, you're just, you're just going to think, you know, why bother? It's not useful. Um, but there's a lot of useful information that's being shared. So the end users are 
are very pleased with the system. Um, and obviously because we installed everything in the new space, we haven't retrofitted the existing space as, as much as we were hoping to at this point. Um, you know, construction is what it is. So, you know, they look at each space, like this is, this is massive on this side. We have all this technology. When are we going to get it over here? Um, so there's, there's a drive to get it. Um, we're working diligently on making it happen. And, um, you know, just the actual safety that's been provided to the patient through some of these systems working together, especially the striker and MediSign, um, there's just been, there's been a million, literally 1 million safety, um, catches and they're not like life threatening safety catches, but they're all, they're all moments in time. And this is just from August <laughs> from wow. live. So this is August till now there's been over a million catches and some of them have been fixed in three seconds and some of them taken, you know, like minutes, but they've all been captured and they've all been corrected. So you just look at that total number of incidents that could have gone unnoticed under the old system until potentially something happened to bring it to your attention or the next time a patient is visited by the nurse, you know, you just look at it in that respect, uh, our already low fall numbers are being impacted by the system. And, you know, we'll, we'll just take that as a, as a win for everyone. Oh, no, that's great. I mean, anything, anything we could do in the hospital to promote better patient safety and patient care, I think is a win-win, right? Mm -hmm. People heal better when they're taken care of. And they, I think this system is helping people feel taken care of. Right. Yeah. If they're happy in the environment or at least comfortable, then that definitely aids in the whole process. So now that you have one hospital done, is this a plan to execute it over the entire system or is it going to be a slower process? Um, it will be a little bit slower um, because Northern is just one of those places that the foundation says, oh, you need that. Let me go out and find the money for you. And, and they come through. So we are very fortunate as far as that goes. Um, other hospitals have have uh collected and used some of the systems not all so you know the vocera thing is going to be pretty much network wide uh medi science being put in place and it is in place in in one of our other facilities uh there's interest in it at uh, one of my other facilities and the you know just looking at this as a whole there's a lot of money that has to be spent in order for it to be a hundred percent like what's at Northern, but McLaren's commitment is we're going to do, it's part of our slogan. We're going to do what's best and doing what's best is, is, uh, looking at the tech and making sure that it fits with, you know, the operation of that particular facility. And if it makes sense, we're going to go forward with it. I mean, I love it. I love our chat today. And we're going to wrap this up, but I want to ask you, we always ask every guest at the end, what is your words of wisdom? What can we leave with the audience? Maybe about this experience or your experiences in general over your longevity of your career. What would you like to leave the listeners with? <laughs> uh, just stay alert. There is so much happening in healthcare right now. Um, some of it is super challenging, but if you stay alert to what's available out there, um, it will allow you to better guide. And that's what I feel our job is in healthcare technology is to guide the facility in the direction of the newer tech to help with the situations we find ourselves in. That's awesome. I really like that. That stay alert, head on a swivel. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's a good model for life, right? Right, right. Well, thanks you all for tuning in again today. Again, my name is Sherelle with Multi Medical Systems and Rich Reamer with McLaren Health. And uh, we'll post your contact information. Maybe there's somebody out there who wants to learn more and I'm sure you'd be happy to share. Absolutely. Thank you all for tuning in. And you know, you can find us on Spotify, iTunes. Check out our website at multimedicalsystems.com where you can find all the episodes on HTM Insider. 
Thanks again, Rich, and everyone have a great day. Thank you, Richard, for a great presentation. If you enjoyed today's episode, you might enjoy our ongoing webinar series, Webinar Wednesday. You can find a calendar of upcoming live webinars as well as an archive of on-demand webinars at webinarwednesday.live. To obtain your certificate for one CE credit from the ACI, please remember to click the link located below this podcast title to complete today's survey. If you have any questions, you can reach us at webinar at mdpublishing.com.